If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com And welcome to the Dan Badani Show on TruthRadioShow.com and welcome to the First Corinthians book here, Chapter 6. If you missed chapters 1 through 5, they're in our playlist and please don't go any further unless you watch those uh, first five chapters because this will not make sense to you. But this is an in-depth, comprehensive study of the Bible. If you're looking for somebody just to read it for you, uh, you got the wrong place. We read the Bible, obviously, but we study. We study every word we can and try to pull out the full context. And we got a specific Bible study approach like we always do. And we uh, pray for wisdom and understanding at first. So we uh, want wisdom and understanding. And where do we get that from? We get that from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Father and Holy Spirit. So, Yeshua, Jesus, we pray to you, and uh, once again, please forgive us all individually of the sins we may have committed today, Lord, and bless us and just make us pure before you and help us avoid temptation. And Heavenly Father, we come before you, your mighty throne, and we ask you to write your word upon our hearts today, in uh, this case, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we ask for the Holy Spirit to uh, comfort us to write these words upon our hearts today. And we ask you to help everybody here today, Lord, and uh, protect us all from the forces of evil. And to just bless everybody here and bless this broadcast and your awesome, amazing word that may be written upon us once again. In your mighty name, we pray, amen. And we read the Bible in context, because context is key, and let the scripture interpret scripture. Don't let your own understanding get involved. Let the Holy Spirit interpret it for you. So, guys, if you've got a Bible, open up uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And we do get it on screen just in case. So, uh, But we always invite you, encourage you, I should say, to read it for yourselves. Very important to understand. So, now again, this is Paul's continuation to the le um, his letter to the Church of Corinth. Because of division, fornication, which we just learned about in the last uh, chapter, chapter 5, there is major fornication going on with some people in the Church of Corinth. Now, Paul's continuing here saying, Dear any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before this, the saints. So I'm, I see this too within among our community. People having stuff against each other. So in today's world, with this whiz, right? People. They, they get butt hurt, okay? I don't know a better way to explain it. I right? get offended, whatever you want to call it, right? They'll run to the courts and get a restraining order or some, you know, garbage like that. Instead of going before the, the council and the church or whatever to try to work this out. Same thing in our community here, guys. We see it in the chat room all the time. That's some of the shows. There's division. There are people creating Facebook pages and groups that the secret are from the other talking smack against some other people in this other group and all that, that needs to stop. This has been going on for a while, guys. And uh, Paul was dealing the same thing here in the Church of Corinth, the division. There's division among us, too. So there's a lot of division of people hating on each other and all that. You know what? Let's go to God with this. Or if you got two people fighting with each other, whatever the case, then have a mediation group. Get on the phone and talk to these people. Say, all right, what's bothering you? Get it off your chest. What's bothering you? Get it off your chest. What can we do to work this out? Even if you guys don't hang out and be friends again, but be respectful after that and work something out that you can come to a mutual understanding. So again, this is dare any of you having this matter against another and go before the law, but what about God? What about the saints? Us? That we can help. Do you not know this, that the saints shall judge the world? Yeah, that's written. In the end times, we the, we are the saints. We are the saints, guys. The believers, the body of Christ. The remnant. We will be judging even the fallen angels and our enemies. We're not judges now, no. But we will be standing before 
these people who are going to be lined up and we're going to be reading from the book of life. There's going to be many books out there and we are going to help God judge these people. That doesn't mean run out and judge people now. No, you don't do that that way. You pray for people, even the enemies and all that stuff. You pray for them and try to help them. That's it. So I just want to clear that up real quick. And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? So help people, he's saying. And especially in this community here, guys, help them. So he's saying you've got to judge the entire world, all the evil, all the, un, um, the, the unrighteous. So if you could do that in a, a massive scale like that in the end times, so are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? If you could do this the whole world, you know what I mean? That's what he's saying. So know you, know ye not that shall judge the angels? I was just saying this. He's saying, don't you know you got to judge the angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If you could sit there, Paul's saying, if you could sit there at the end times, right, you're going to have billions, and it's not even exaggerating, billions would it be. Billions upon billions of people standing before you. All of us. They're going to all be lined up. Because here's the thing, right? When judgment comes, all the people are going to be slain by the sword of God, the sword of Jesus, and the people who are in hell, they're going to be washed up in the ocean, that's what the Bible says. The, the, the ocean, because hell is like right under our feet, in Shoal. you got hell, Shoal, uh, hell in paradise. The people in paradise are going to be resurrected, and then we're going to catch up with them afterwards. The people who are in hell, that are suffering torment right now, that's nothing compared to what's coming to them. The lake of fire is ten times worse. Even hell is thrown into the lake of fire. And I just want to point that out. That, um, hell and the lake of fire are two different places. Hell is only temporary. So is in paradise. That's just a holding place show, literally under the earth here, not figuratively or metaphorically. It's literally under the earth. They're not just uh, six feet under sleeping in the grave. Sleeping in this spiritual sense means you're in one of those places. A lot of people don't understand that. They think, oh, no, God, we ain't going to punish people. No, then, you, know, you, know, you don't know the Bible if you think that. That's the dispensational garbage you learn in the churches. We've done tons of shows on this stuff. On a spiritual warfare Friday. So Paul's saying, like, yeah, back to this, right? Don't you know you got to judge the angels? So how much more things that pertain to this life? So in the context, what he's saying here, don't be afraid to judge people. And again, I have to emphasize, it doesn't mean you're condemning them. You're judging them because of the sin. And the other thing I was explained too is if you're guilty of the sin, you have no right to judge. In other words, don't take try to take a, a plank out of somebody's eye when you have, I'm sorry, don't take try to take a piece of sawdust out of one's eye when you have a plank in yours. If you're guilty of a sin, if you're stealing stuff, you, you have no right to even tell your child not to steal. Because that's a hypocrite. But yeah, you are allowed to judge righteously. That's what the Bible says. You don't condemn the person. No, you judge. Say, listen, you can't be doing this. It's a sin. So he's saying, don't be afraid to do this. Because if you're going to be standing at the end times, judging the wicked, you're going to have billions of people before us. You're going to be judging the fallen angels. So why would you be afraid to judge a person now? That's what he's saying. If then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to the judge who are least esteemed in the church. Right? And I speak to you your shame. It is so that there is not a wise man among you? He's asking us, is there, is there not a smart person among you? Anybody in this group right now, is there not a smart person among us? That's what he's asking. No, not one that shall be able to judge between his, his brethren. So these are questions. So, because Paul's disgusted. This church has went to, uh, to chaos. He's sitting there reaming his people. 
He goes, I speak to your shame, to you people shameful right now. Is there not one smart, wise person here among you that could help, that could do something? But brother, go to the Lord with brother. And that before the unbelievers. He's not telling you to do this. He's saying people do this. When you go to the law with a brother, and that the before the unbelievers. Now therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because you go to the law with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, which is no, you do wrong and defraud and that your brethren. Before the, in the Bible here, is taken for one's own something that someone else deserves or has a legitimate claim to. So taken, you know, it's basically just say, uh, somebody passed away, right? And the person who inherited money or a home or something, and you've taken it away somehow, you manipulated the law or whatever the case, you defrauded the person. The person who deserves that claim, and you took it from them. Which is another form of stealing, by the way. Eighth commandment violation, right? So nay, you do wrong. No, you do wrong and defraud that your brethren Know ye that not the unrighteous shall inherit the kingdom of God? He's asking, you, don't you know the unrighteous are not going to uh, inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, he says, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, or adulterers, or infeminate, or abusers of themselves with mankind. And let me go and get the infeminate here. Nor these or covet people who covet, or drunks, or revelers. Or extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. He's saying, know these things. Because if you're doing these things, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Let's see what this word means here. And this is what a Bible study, like I said in the last chapter. Don't be afraid to look up a definition of word. You're not going to look stupid. Because if you don't know the definition, you know, it could affect your whole understanding of the entire uh, scripture. So is the uh, neither fornicators? Let me see what that means. By verses of, just want to see the. Having the qualities of the female sex, soft or delicate, or unmanly uh, manly degree, tender, womanish, voluptuous. Oh, all right. So basically. What does it mean when a All right, so somebody having the qualities of a woman. So we'll be like a transgender or um, metrosexual, whatever you want to call it. So again, right, and um, now I want to point out something like I said in the last chapter. I'm going to do this every single time because here's the thing. I might be repetitive, guys, might be redundant, but just think how much repetitive redundant is the church is doing today. Every Sunday or whenever people go to churches, every, every time these dispensationalist churches do this, they constantly beat you over the head with stuff. They say the Ten Commandments were abolished, no, they were not. The Ten Commandments apply in the Old Testament, and they apply in the New Testament, and they're going to still apply in the New Kingdom. The Ten Commandments are not just for the Jews, okay? They were by God, that God's laws, that were given to Moses for the people. Jesus himself, and again, like I said in the last chapter, if the Ten Commandments are abolished, why are they mentioned in every chapter so far we studied? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and now uh, 1 Corinthians. Over and over again. And you're going to continue to see these up into Revelation. Right through Revelation, you're going to see about the commandments. So if any person out there says, oh, the Ten Commandments are abolished, you better tell them about Hold it right there. You better go back and read the Bible because they are not. Again, Revelation chapter 14, 12, 
Keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus Christ. It's not an option. And grace is not a free pass to sin. So right there, look, fornicators is a uh, seventh commandment violation. It's adultery. Because Jesus said, right, even if you look at a girl lustfully, you've already committed uh, fornication. Remember we covered that? I think it was Matthew. Have you been following these series here? He said, even if looking at a person lustfully, you've already com uh, committed adultery in your heart. Idol church, right? People who worship idols and all that. Second commandment violation. Adulterers, the seventh commandment there. And imminent means uh, being feminine. Or, uh, you know, I mean, other than what you're supposed to be, right? Or abuses themselves with mankind. That could go a long way. <laughs> that That's drugs, that's, um, you know, just mutilating your body. Or, uh, that could go a long way. Sexual as well. Thieves, what's that? Stealing, right? That's the Eighth Commandment. Coven, covenant, that's the Tenth Commandment. Drunkards, rivalers. You see what rivalers mean here. But I got an idea about someone trying to outdo somebody else in success breeds envy in neighbors. The rival is people who are constantly out trying to outdo you. In other words, you got we well, all these people, right? In other words, you 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 come into some money, right? You go out and buy this nice car. You need it for you and the family, right? It's a nice car, it's a couple years old, right? So the neighbor or your family member who's a hater, they'll go out and buy one that's better than yours, newer than yours, because they're rivals, they're envious. That's what the, this is talking about. Car, it could be anything. Cars, whatever the case. A house. They'll go, they're going to upstage you every time. You get your um, your fiancé their uh, a 10 carat ring. They're going to go out and get a 12 carat ring. For theirs. You know what I'm saying? We all know people like this, guys. Instead of being happy for somebody. I know every, tons of people got better things than me. Or they get a job that's better than mine or something like that. Or like I'm in wrestling, right? They make it big in the wrestling. I'm not over there rivaling them or hating on them. I'm glad for them. I'm happy for them. That's where we're supposed to be. Extortioners, we already went over that. Uh, shall not, shall, yeah. They are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Plain and simple. And such were some of you but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. So, all here's the thing. Everybody, I don't care who you are, okay, I'm going to be flat. Even myself. Every one of us, every single one of us has violated one of these things. And, and probably still do. I'm not your judge. All the time, I swear, whatever the case, by accident, whatever, you know, whatever happens, I, I'm, I sin. But I come to repentance and pray, you know, confess to Jesus. That's what Paul's saying. You can be washed and sanctified by, you know, justified in the name of Jesus. That's not, doesn't mean, to hear justified doesn't mean you're justified to do these things. No. Justified in the name of the Lord Jesus that you will be washed clean from it by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. And all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So, is Paul saying it's okay to do these things? Because people take him out of context all the time. Paul's like, sometimes he's hard to understand. You gotta really be in, in, the, in, in the scripture here yeah, to understand Paul. No, Paul's not saying that. And the thing is, they'll, they'll take these verses out of context. Somebody will pull, and I, not this verse particularly, but so many people have done this before. Oh, look, Paul's saying it's okay. No, if you actually read it in context, it's what? The paragraph or chapter, he's not saying that. Let's see what expedient means. To bear or bring together, to be well profitable. 
bring together with the personal reference, to be well profitable, right? To bring together. So all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not, not to bring together, to be brought together. And all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So no, he's not saying it's okay to do these things. Because <laughs> I know some people out there will take it out of context. This is why we read the Bible in context. So yeah, we you can't not possibly misunderstand it. So meats for the belly, and the belly for the meats, but God shall destroy both of them, and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but the, for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. So now, look, here's where I'm pointing out, right? So he Paul just read all the stuff of fornication, this and that, and the other thing, right? So some bloke out there would be like, oh, look, look, Paul's saying it's okay to do these things. Look, it's lawful to him. He's saying it's okay, right? But failing to go to the next verse where he's saying, no, your body's not for fornicating or doing these things. Your body's for the Lord, and the Lord, your body. And God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up in his own power. Like, just like Jesus was resurrected, we're going to be resurrected as well. Because all of us are pointed to die once. And if some of us are lucky enough to see him come through the clouds, then we're not going to face death. That'd be awesome, by the way. But, yeah. But we, we're going to be resurrected. Know ye not you are the bodies are the members of Christ? So he's asking them. Asking them. Don't you know your bodies are the members of Christ? We're part of Jesus. And it doesn't mean we're gods or anything like that. So I know New Ages, I'll take that out of context. So that's not what that means. We're the members of Christ. We belong to him. We're his remnant. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? He's asking us, right? So, because of all you, what you people are doing out there, talking to these people in the church, of course. Yeah, you guys are, so should I t make you all members of a harlot, which is a whore, or a slaw, or whatever you want? Now, yeah, that's what it is, plain and simple. And yeah, people badge me for my language and all that. Well, that's what it is. A harlot is a slaw or a whore, or a prostitute, or whatever the case. That's what it is. So you say, asking, so could I, should I make you members, then take you members of Christ and make you become members of a harlot? He says, God forbid. That means no. Of course not. What? Asking, know you that not which is joined to a harlot is in one body? Don't you know that? To have sex with him it is in one body. For two, says he, shall be one flesh. Because remember the Bible says, when uh, husband and wife are joined together, they become one flesh, right? But when you're not married to somebody, and this is, this is very educational here. If you go and have sex with some whore or whatever the case, right? A harlot. And the Bible says whore, so don't badger me for saying that. People just get ridiculous sometimes. Oh, don't say whore. I thought you were a Christian. Well, yeah, the Bible says it. It's exactly what it is. It's a whore, a holler. So, and it could be a prostitute or just a person just likes to have sex all the time with everybody. So he's saying, yeah, when you join yourself with this person, you fornicate with them, right? You're becoming one flesh. What does this mean? When you ejaculate inside of a woman, your DNA literally gets attached to hers. So everybody, if you're a man out there, right, everybody you've slept with, your DNA is part of her now. It's genetically like this, especially if you had children with the people. And women, every man you've um, had ejaculate inside of you, and we're adults here, and I'm not going to censor myself, because this is exactly what this is saying. Because I know people who don't talk like that. Well, guess what? Too bad. That's what the Bible says and exactly what it's uh, talking about. They were adults, so get over yourself. And uh, sorry to sound rude like that, guys, because some people just get ridiculous. They really don't. They, I call them the Ned Flander Christians who can't accept literal biblical stuff. 
they're going to be uh, soft pedaled. You know, it's ridiculous. We don't do that here. If you're looking for a soft pedaled person that blows smoke up your rear end, and you, you got the wrong place. And somebody who's politically correct, you definitely got the wrong place because I'm not either of those things. I'll tell you the way it is and how it is, plain and simple. Just like Paul did, just like Jesus did. So he's saying, when you have sex with them, who commit this fornication, you, you become one flesh with them. So women who have sex with multiple partners, guess what? Your DNA is all scrambled up. And it's a lifetime. It's a genetic combination. But he that joins into the Lord is one spirit. So when you become reborn in the accepted blood of Jesus Christ, right? His blood transforms you. His DNA, our DNA mixed together. We become one in spirit. That's what he's trying to uh, compare these things to. Now he says, remember, back here, right? Let me go back here quick. Because remember, uh, all things are, 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 are lawful to me. So people say, oh, this is Paul saying this is okay to do. All these fornication and everything else, right? Well, nope. Because if you kept bother reading, right? He says, God forbid down here. Then he go, goes on to say, flee fornication. He doesn't say it's okay to do it. Flee from it. Flee means get away. Every sin that a man does is without the body. But he that commits fornication sins against his own body. You are genetically destroying your body and spiritual. People don't understand this. They think, oh, it's all, yeah, if they just have sex with somebody, there's no big deal as long as I don't get them pregnant or whatever. It is a big deal. Even if you use a condom. You are sharing bodily fluids, and like I said, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to censor myself. You're sharing bodily fluids. In, in what, especially when you make out with somebody. You know, that do your tongue to tongue. You're, you're, yeah, <laughs> you're sw swapping spit. That's what it's called, literally. And, yeah, sorry to sound gross like that. You're genetically sharing each other's uh, DNA. And where's most DNA tests when people do DNA tests? They do the mouth swabs, right? To get your DNA. Don't you think that's going into somebody else's mouth and you're done into yours? So don't think just using the condom is going to save you. From, no, it doesn't work that way. So what? Now you know. Yeah, I'm sorry. What? He's asking what? Know you not that the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? Which you have a God. Have of God, I'm sorry. You have of God and not of your own. So think about this. And this will help you a lot too. The Holy Ghost resides in us, right? He's telling the people here, the Holy Ghost resides in you. So when you go commit fornication with these people, you are debauching. You are harming the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's you. As we described earlier, right? That's you. You're harming us. Hey, don't get me wrong, guys. I'm uh, Italian on my father's side, Native American on my mother's side. Growing up, uh, yeah, especially Italian guy, like the hormones, like no, no, no tomorrow. Yeah, especially adolescent age, 16, 17 years old. Every girl that looks good, yeah, you're thinking un, un, unclean things, plain and simple. Or you're doing unclean things, right? Plain and simple. So none of us are innocent here. <laughs> Uh, and I'm not claiming to be innocent either. That's why we had to repent, and all of us have to do that. So now know the stuff before you go touch another person. Mar you know, make sure you're married because you're desecrating the holy temple. Not that you're holy; the Holy Ghost is inside you that makes you holy because of the Holy Ghost. For you are brought with the price. You're bought with the price. What's that price? What's the price that you were bought with? It's the blood of Jesus Christ. The sacrifice of the Son of God. Jesus paid a massive price for you. So before you go sin again, and it helps out a lot too, if you really think about it. And, you know, we all sin, I understand that. And it's hard uh, to avoid it half the time. 
but we need to repent. But you know what helps out too is think of these things. Remember, number one, you you're the temple of God, right? You're desecrating the temple. Number two, and I'm speaking for me too, guys. Like I said, I'm not innocent. Think of the price that was paid for you. The Son of Man, the Son of God, went on the cross being sacrificed for you. Us. So before you go out and do these debauchery, disgusting things, remember this. That your body, your soul, and everything was paid for with a massive price. Don't let it be in vain. Therefore, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are, you are God's. Which are God's, I'm sorry. Now you are God's. <laughs> Take that back. We're not God's. It says, which are God's. It belongs to God. We are not God. So I just want to point that out too. Because again, people take that out of context. And I'm sorry if I misspoke that. But once again, you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Which are God's. Which you belong to God. Again, we're not God's. All right? Which are God which belongs to God. That's what that means. Not that we're God. Okay, we belong to God. That's what that means. Especially for you new ages out there who think we're gods and all. That doesn't work that way. You could never become a God. You never will. Plain and simple. Now, quick Bible tip too. I like to mention this a lot too. So, in the Bible, right, when you see because New Ages will bring it up. They'll say, oh, uh, the Bible says you're gods. And I forgot what verse it is. It says that, but it doesn't mean that. Because when it says gods or God, it's a lowercase g. So everywhere in the Bible that has a lowercase g associated with God or gods, it's false gods or God. When it The only time in the Bible when it's capitalized, God, that means I have only Father. So don't let people deceive you with the scripture because these people know the scripture good but they know how to deceive people too because a lot of people don't know that. So the only time you're going to see the word God capitalized is when only when it's referring to a holy father. That's it. When it's referring to a false god or gods it's going to be a lowercase g. Always remember that please because um, that one little thing could miss oh man you have no idea. And uh, we've done shows exposed in the New Age, and I don't know how many times that these New Ages, I went to debates with them on TikTok and everything else. It's like, oh, the Bible says right here, we're gods. It's like, show it to me. They show it to me. I'm like, do you bother reading the Bible right? Oh, what do you mean? That's clear as day. And I'm like, yeah, it's clear as day because if you understood the Bible, where it refers to God of gods with a lowercase g, it refers to false gods. Real God, the only God is the only time it's capitalized. And it shuts them right up. It's funny. It's great. Because they know they can get over on people who don't know any, be know any better. That's why I like doing this uh, program here because I can bring up so much stuff. We use so many examples here in the scriptures. You know, the dispensationalists who say the Ten Commandments are abolished, which is wrong. And New Agers. You know, that's why I love doing this uh, stuff here. I'm learning as I go as well. Good stuff. I love it. So, guys, thank you for tuning in. And remember, uh, don't take anybody else's word for this. Not even mine. Read it for yourself. When we're done with this video, shut it off. Go back and read it for yourself again. And let me know what you think. If you've got any questions, comments, answers, or you want to add something to this that you think I might have missed, put it in the comments section. Not the live chat, but the comments section. Because uh, when we premiere this, there's a live chat, by the way. And uh, you can so um, fellowship with people that's watching the premiere live. But again, uh, go into the comment section after and let me know, you know, uh, what you know what, what you think, whatever the case. So any questions, comments, whatever the case. So thank you for tuning in. Go to truthradioshow.com for a list of all our shows. And thank you for tuning in to First Corinthians chapter six. We will see you for chapter seven in this in-depth comprehensive study of the Bible. So. Love you all. God bless. Shalom. And you are the resistance. And when I say you are the resistance, guys, that means we, as the remnant of Jesus Christ, we are the resistance against evil. Take care.